Have you been told you need to stop doing what you love, whether it's exercise, running, or a sport? Well, here at Dynamic, we don't like that answer. In this podcast, we'll talk to leaders in the health and wellness space from Southwest Florida to get the solutions you need to get you back to doing what you love. Welcome to the Dynamic Naples podcast. Should we do the cold opens again? All right. Did you just click record? Yeah. And you just wanted to make this natural? Yeah. So go. Be natural. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to we got to just bring it all back. Bring back the modus. Yeah, that that podcast was fun cuz it was just like we were just kind of hanging out and then we would talk about health and fitness stuff. And I don't I spend 0% of my time now researching health and fitness stuff, so I rely on you to teach me things. Oh god, here we go. Yeah. All right. Well, today I want to talk about bench press. Hate it. Why? I I just think it's a terrible exercise. I think it causes a ton of shoulder injuries. And especially if you're older, you shouldn't do it. I hope you're being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> I do think uh, many people probably have that thought, though. Yes. It seems, you know, I've been in wellness, fitness for God, a couple decades now. And there are trends. You're old, dude. Oh, my God. I know I'm old. So, but there are trends. Just I like was born anything. a couple decades ago. I, I know. Uh, so, oh, shoot. No. No, it's been like two and a half decades. No, you're over the hill now. I'm getting old. You're halfway to 50, which is halfway to death. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, there's trends in fitness just like any other industry. And it seems like in the past yeah, five or so, maybe year, maybe greater years, it's like uh, bench pressing is like out of fashion. Don't you feel that way? I think maybe like four years ago it was out of fashion. I feel, I feel like it's... It, I mean, it has a revival, back. yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, there was a long time where I'd like go into a gym. And there's just no benches. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Like, yeah. I love bench pressing. It's fun. It feels good. And also, let's go ahead and have the functional discussion, right? Because I hear that a lot. Well, bench press is not functional, mm-hmm. which is garbage. Yeah. First of all, what is functional? What does it even mean? Well, I think the idea is does it translate to everyday life? And... I think if you were to track all of the different movements you do on a daily basis, you would realize the wide variety of things you do and everything you do in the gym is, is, ends up being functional. If you're, if that's your definition, right? Like bicep curls. Oh, it's not functional. Right. We'll pick up a coffee cup. Yeah. Or carry a heavy box of something. Right. Mm -hmm. Or pick up your kids. That's all right. Pushing a stroller. That's a bench press. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Well, if you get in a fight, you got to push somebody away from you. That's well, guess what? The guy with a heavier bench press is going to push away a little harder. Yep. So it's totally functional. I, I basically, I don't think anything's not functional. Well, and the thing that's nice about bench press, yeah, I definitely don't think anything's not functional. I mean, you can do anything in the gym. And, uh, and as long as you do it well, which is another conversation, it, it translates to, to real life and it can make you better. And as far as bench press goes, bench press like forces shoulder mobility. Because you're on a bench, and that when you bring your the bar all the way to the chest, your chest, I mean, that's a ton of horizontal abduction, extension, and everybody needs that. Yes. Um, so let's get into some errors and injuries because mm-hmm. it does produce pain in a lot of people. Yes. I see two main culprits for pain with bench press, and there's probably more, but the two patterns I recognize that most often is it's missing. You're missing something, right? Um, so, you know, I like this idea of, um, a certain motion can expose a dysfunction. So you Mm -hmm. might have an issue with range of motion in your shoulder, uh, but you might not know it until you expose it by taking the joint to a place that hasn't been in a while. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So I think this is what happens a lot is there's two main things. I think you're either sort of too dominant in your internal rotators of the shoulder Mm -hmm. Or you are missing shoulder extension. Those are the two big ones. What would you say? Yeah, definitely shoulder extension. I mean, yeah, internal rotation too. Definitely shoulder extension. Because it's the first thing you see as somebody goes and tries to bench press and gets all the way to their chest when they, they're missing shoulder extension so that the whole scapula dumps forward. Yes. That's, that, to me, is the, probably the number one thing. Um, so let's describe that for the listeners. So extension is if you just put your arm straight behind your back. That's, that's extension, right? So um, 
you know, usually what would you say 30, 40 degrees, probably about normal mm -hmm. average, I'd say. Yeah. And a good way to test this is just like lie face down on the ground, raise your arms up behind you and see how high they get. Yeah. Or you could, um, kind of lay in your stomach and then bend your elbows. So your fists are on the ground and see if you can lift your fists off the ground a couple inches. Mm -hmm. And does that provoke pain? Okay. Then, you know, that's the issue. Uh, or if you were to do like a, um, um, a press, like maybe only halfway down and it doesn't hurt. That's it. And then it's only when you get all the way down, it hurts. That's a sign that you're probably missing some shoulder extension. And the compensation is your shoulder dumps forward and you put a lot of pressure on the front of your shoulder where your bicep lives and the anterior capsule, which is uh, there's a very sensitive structure there anyways, because there's a big um, neurovascular bundle that passes right through there. Hey, this couch is way better than your couch outside. My couch outside is covered in mold. Yeah, and like when you sit on all the cushions slip. I know. This is a, a complaint I've had with my wife several mm -hmm. times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's mechanism one. All right, so restore shoulder extension usually resolves that one. The other one, too, is you've got internal and external rotation of the shoulder. Uh, if your external rotators are on the weak side or and or your internal rotators are on the stiff side, um, then you get that sort of shoulder flare. I see that happening a lot, too. Um, Can you describe the shoulder flare? So when you're pressing, say you're doing a push-up or a bench press, sort of the, let's call it ideal would be your elbows are about 45 degrees away from your body as opposed to like up like you're making the letter T with your arms. That's what I mean by shoulder flare. Mm. I'm sure you've seen that, right? Yeah. And this will happen to anybody who you can get anyone to flare if you put enough load, right? So maybe for some people just doing push-up, you'll see that shoulder flare, elbow flare. Uh, or someone like you, maybe I give you 400 pounds to press or something like that. Or I don't know. what you like 260. All right, 260. <laughs> At some point, like you're, you're not going to be able to maintain that shoulder position and your elbows will flare as an attempt to – well, it's I, I don't know. I think it's either an attempt to find some tension. So tension hunting is what we call that. Um, or maybe you're just having difficulty maintaining motor control of the position, mm -hmm. one or the other. It's kind of like a knee wobble on a squat, right? If you give anybody enough weight and squat it, their knees are going to wobble at some point. It's sort of the same thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I'll, I'll talk about this on a more personal level. What I was doing, I was building up, like working towards some heavier maxes a few months ago, and I was doing heavier bench presses with higher load and – I pushed the weight pretty hard and without really any good shoulder extension mobility. And uh, because the weight was heavy I was, I, and the volume was high, I was doing like 10 or 12 reps with like 82% one RM. And uh, because the weight was heavy and the volume was high, I was doing just a ton. I was just shrugging my shoulders and dumping my, my scapula forward and really using my upper trap and just aggravating the heck out of it. And I got up from the bench press, and I just – like, my whole neck was so stiff. Mm -hmm. I immediately couldn't turn my head side to side. And I was going on a date later that day, and I was going to play golf, which is all rotation. Yeah. And I couldn't turn my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the, the next hour just foam rolling and theragunning and mobilizing my neck. I, I think I got a couple more degrees out of it, but I, yeah. I, was, I looked terrible on the golf course. So let's describe internal and external rotation so people know what we're talking about. So external rotation, it would look like uh, trying to touch the back of your head. Internal rotation would be like um, if you were to uh, strap a bra. Like that, that position your arm has to go into is, is internal rotation. Is that something rotation. you're used to? Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so the pec, the lat, and the subscapularis are the three muscles that do internal rotation of the shoulder. Are you looking at notes? No. I, I talk about this like every day, all day. Why are you staring at your computer? Because you're too loud. I'm watching the, the volume bar go red. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so those three muscles uh, sort of notoriously get stiff. And most it allows people, me to command a room. Your voice? Yeah. Yeah, I have to shut the door while, while you're in the gym working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, those three muscles get stiff. And then your body will sort of naturally go there. Your body's going to always kind of find the path of least resistance. So if it, if you're kind of used to living in that position of internal rotation, which think of like a, anybody working at a desk is basically in a relative position of internal rotation. So that becomes a pathway your body knows and will kind of go there when you've overloaded a movement. Uh, the other thing, too, is you've got a capsule in the shoulder. 
So when you go into interrotation, you can kind of passively wind up those tissues of the shoulder capsule and sort of falsely find a position of stability. So I think that's what happens. Hmm. So I think the same thing happens to the hip, right? If you overload the hip, like in a, say, like a single leg squat, it's if you can't muscularly control that position of your leg, you'll naturally fall into like an interrotated position because you're winding up the capsule and finding stability there. We ought to do a... Uh episode about that internal rotation and that thing that that guy said that connor whatever his name is yeah that i kind of completely disagree with it but yeah we'll touch on that on a different one um yeah what else anything else you see happening in bench press no i mean that's the those are the main ones do we want to talk about how to prevent it yeah so i would say you just address whatever is going on there so If you're missing extension, you work on some shoulder extension with some mobility drills. There's something called a sink stretch that I love to do for that, where you basically put your hands um, on like a a barbell, like in a rack, and you sink your torso down. So you're basically pulling yourself into shoulder extension. Um, If the issue is more of that problem with internal versus external rotation, I, I would probably mobilize the internal rotators. So... Something simple like a pec stretch might help, but uh, more like a, using a ball on the pec or the lat to try to loosen up the internal rotators. And that would probably activate the external rotators, so good old classic shoulder external rotation. Just kind of prime those muscles for movement. And then I also would definitely look at the thoracic spine too. Not to get too technical, but the upper back, if it's stiff and kind of rounded, can just contribute to the whole problem because the, the position of the shoulder blade is a little more anterior or forward if you're rounded at the upper back. Yeah, definitely having more thoracic extension is super important because once you lay flat on the back, you, you, there's no hiding your lack of the thoracic extension. Yeah. And your your the position of your scapula is just going to suffer as a result. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, too, is I'd say there's a lot of just programming errors. I see a lot of guys in particular, they'll spend way too much time on the chest and less time on the back. And it's funny because you'll ask them, like, okay, do you do chest and back? Oh, yeah, I do equal amounts. And then you look at the program. It's like, okay, on chest day, I do six sets of bench, six sets of incline, six sets of decline. And they follow up with flies, right? And then their back day is like, I do three sets of pull-ups and three sets of rows. <laughs> and then some bicep curls. <laughs> some bicep curls, yeah. Uh, so they, they just become anterior dominant. And so that whole pattern, all that pushing motion becomes basically that's what the internal rotators do. Uh, and it becomes overly stiff compared to the backside. Yeah, we don't want to demonize pressing and pushing motion. You just want to make sure you're balanced. Yeah, balanced or, or even closer to balanced. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say like there's some people who are like there should be a two to one ratio of pull to push. Like people go kind of extreme with it because yeah, I think I the don't know about those ratios. I think that's a little much. I mean, I definitely think if you're even and on each of these days you're working out at the same intensity, I think you're you're pretty good. I mean, I think go based on symptoms. I wouldn't be too carried away with ratios. Well, I also go based on what you're actually lacking. Yeah. Like if you're not, if you're lacking external rotation, external rotation torque, um, extension strength, extension mobility, you should be training those things more than the inverse. But once you're balanced, which nobody is, then you can sort of level off the ratios. Yeah, I think, so the idea of balance or symmetry, I think, is a bit of a fallacy. But I do know, like, the further you get away from balanced or, or symmetrical, the greater likelihood of pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an ideal, not a reality. Yeah. Yeah, it's a direction, mm-hmm. not, not a destination. Oh, that's deep. It's a yeah. direction, not a destination. Yeah. What's another way more, like, what's another thing that's a direction, not a destination? A compass. No, I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> in life. I, just, I want another one because I was deep and I'm trying to apply it to something else. Like uh, happiness, is that a is that a direction, not a destination? Success. Mm. Right, how you define that? Yeah, exactly. You know, always get more. Wow. The the listeners right now are probably like really blown away. Yeah. <laughs> really blown away. Uh, uh, um, what was I gonna say? So let's talk about some simple things you can do apart from mobilizing and strengthening to just like that day when you're doing bench like what can you do to improve things Uh, like once you're on the bench like when you're ready to go how can we how can we fix this i'm going to put out a video today about it not because of the podcast but because i just made it recently and then he wanted to talk about bench press i was like oh perfect um one thing i like to do when i grab the bar i do the same thing on the lat pull down so you can translate this to both 
is I grab the bar and I sort of I sort of externally rotate my hands and I torque the bar a little bit, almost like I'm trying to bend it. Uh, and then as I go down, I'm, I'm doing the bending less on the way down, but then as I come up, I'm really trying to externally rotate and, and torque the bar and push up. And what you'll notice at the whole shoulder and elbow is you're taking your elbows and they're going forward more, right, instead of letting them flare out to the sides like we were talking about. Um, so that's like a, a simple little cue, obviously keeping your shoulders down, sticking your chest out a little bit, trying to keep a neutral pelvis. Those things are good, but I do like that torquing of the, the bar cue. It kind of is like a very, it's a very visceral way to get into some more external rotation and depression. Yeah, and you're probably by definition turning off the internal rotators, I'm guessing, right? to some degree at least. Yeah, and it's not, you're not doing it so much so that you're like over you're overdoing it, right? Because you actually need internal rotation torque as you press up. Yeah, I imagine it's a bit of a co-contraction. Yeah, exactly. It's just like a, it's just enough to maintain good position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did give myself like a little golfer's elbow once from doing that too much. So you, you can go too, yeah. <laughs> too haywire on that. So mm-hmm. yeah, if you do that, I would you know, kind of keep on the gentle side. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's a good cue. Yeah. Bend, bend the bar so the elbows face each other. Yeah, and when you do a lat pull down and you use this cue, that's when you actually want to use it more because that's what you're doing. You're pulling down into extension and external rotation. Yeah. So uh, on bench day, I think it's always good to, to do a warm up. Mm-hmm. I, I think kind of what we talked about earlier a little soft tissue release of the inter rotators, activate the external rotators, do some uh, thoracic extension. And then just build up, you know, don't just jump into, you know, 135, you know, maybe just do the bar for several sets. I'll be honest. Um, I feel like I've gotten pretty efficient with my warmups and effective Mm -hmm. where I can go into my first working set. I've had no problems. Yeah, I guess it depends on how experienced you are. If you've got the motor pattern down, I mean, you can probably jump into it a little bit faster than the average person. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, the idea. You need to. I am kind of an Adonis. You're right. Don't listen to him. <laughs> uh, but, no, grooving the pattern, I think, is important. We need to fix that up there. Can you stay on topic? <laughs> um, all right. That's pretty much all I have on bench. You guys should see this gym. This gym is so cool. You are all over the place today. Yeah, but I want to uh, plug my gym. All right. So tell us all about it. It's awesome. You guys got to see the lobby. Chris designed the whole lobby. He's very effeminate. <laughs> he got in touch with his feminine side. He designed the whole lobby. It looks great. He is uh, completely fibbing. He designed 100% of it. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. Yeah, nice wallpaper. All right, John, I'm going to wrap this one up. What? Do you have unexplained pain, or do you wonder just how healthy you are? When was the last time you had your blood tested? Blood chemistry analysis is a great way to stay ahead of any health conditions, and now you can have control of your health with Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is an incredible company that sends blood tests to your home. You can choose from over 30 different tests, whether that's liver function, testosterone, micronutrient, cholesterol, or C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation. It's sent to you with free shipping, and you get your results in two to five days, no physician referral needed. Use the code DPT30 for 30% off. Go to letsgetcheck.com and use the code DPT30. Did you know that you can get started with physical therapy without a physician's referral? Physical therapists don't just solve pain. We get down to the root cause and keep it from coming back. We also discuss all things health, such as nutrition and lifestyle changes. If you feel that you could use some help, let's get on a free console call. Go to www.dynamicnaples.com and sign up for a free call. Also, if you like this podcast, please give us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps us spread the message. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.